All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the Ask Me Anything for the CrossFit Lynchman Private Track. Today is Thursday, October 7th, 2021. And as promised, I promoted this about last week, we've got uh, Emily's sister, Abby, on the show. And she's going to walk us through, she had an incredible and is still in the midst of an incredible weight loss journey. Lost roughly 100 pounds, coming up on 100 pounds-ish. And... Just, I posted an incredible before and after photo in the private track. People submitted questions. We're going to answer the most popular ones, ones that get upvoted the most. We might go down a couple side avenues if those questions take us to various places. But other than that, thanks for the questions. And we'll just we'll just go on and come on, come on up. Uncomfortably close, right? It's not really made for two people. Whenever, whenever Emily's on here too, she's like, I'm so close. So... Why don't you give everybody just a quick little backstory? Um, I would I would say, but I might be wrong. I would tell people that you work in the healthcare industry in the yes. hospital. You know, so what do you do? Uh, yeah, I am. My name is Abby. Um, <clears throat> I am a nurse um, here in our local area, and yeah, work in work in healthcare. And so I was, I've always actually kind of wanted to have you come on and chat about the journey because I've seen it firsthand. But I just didn't know, you know, some people want to talk about it, don't want to talk about it. When, I don't know, Emily probably brought it up to you more than I did. Was there any kind of on the fence of like, ah, I don't know if I want to go on with a bunch of strangers and share my life story? Or was it yes. like, no, let's do it. <laughs> this is definitely outside of my um, comfort zone. But at least I'm looking at a screen and not people standing in front of me. I a live, a I live think. studio yeah. audience. Yeah. Well, what's, I guess... Give us the quick summary, and then we'll dive into the question. So, for example, um, you know, how much weight have you lost, and how long has it, you know, what day did that start to today? Was, was it six months, six years? You know, how long has the journey been? Sure. Um, I've kind of been one of those people that has yo-yoed back and, back and forth, so um, kind of gained a significant amount of weight after college, I would say. I had a lot of injuries. Um, I have a rheumatoid arthritis diagnosis, so that definitely was not helpful. Um, and then fast forward to where I'm at now, um, and it's been about a year and a half, um, and yeah, I'm rolling up on the, on the hundred pound mark. Okay. Year and a half. You know, that's funny. I wanted to, I realized I didn't know that when, um, when we first started here, which was, cause you weren't heavy growing up. I was not. Nope. Uh, I was pretty active. Played sports in high school, um, and it wasn't really until I got injured in like the eighth grade, actually. <clears throat> still managed to do okay, still really was active all through high school. Um, I got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis when I was 14. Um, and then, you know, it wasn't until I had my third knee surgery, um, and then kind of shortly after college that really. Yeah, started to put on a lot of weight. Yeah, I think that, I think Lost that's... a little bit, then gained a lot back, and now I'm consistently lower than I have been since, like, I don't know, 2006, probably. Which is awesome. 2006 is crazy. Yeah. Uh, that yo-yo part is probably a lot of people have been that or are currently actually in that in one way, shape, or form. The yo-yo, what, what caused the ups and downs? What was that that... It either got to a certain weight on the scale or a certain glance in the mirror or a certain, hey, this aspect of my life shouldn't be as difficult as it is. I need to tighten things up. You tighten it for a bit. That gets annoying. It would slip again. Like, what What was the... Yeah, I think um, a couple of things. One is always doing something that was the extreme. Um, so, like, I'm going to you know, never eat X, Y, and Z, right. <laughs> and I'm going to work out twice a day, every day. Well, that, that all all isn't, yes, all or nothing <laughs> that really isn't sustainable. Um, so I think that played into it. And then I've had to figure out how to manage stress. Mm. Um, so that played into it. The more stressful life was and whatever was going on, um, kind of you, you could tell on my body. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'd, I mean, we don't need to dive down the rabbit hole, but I've you know, obviously known Abby for quite some time, and I will just say that your occupation appears to be stressful. Yes. It does not appear to re relieve stress. It Correct. brings huge amounts of stress into her life, which, yes. uh, I, yeah, that's, that's no good there. Yes. When you would do the all-ins, you know, like I'm going to work out twice a day or I'm doing this massive change in how I eat that, like you said, isn't sustainable... 
were those, did you get those ideas from some other expert or book or website or were just, you just get a wild hair and be like, I'm doing two a days now, you know? Yeah, I pretty much would just get a wild hair and then it's <laughs> always, I'm going to start on Monday and then I clean out the fridge and the cupboard and everything goes in the garbage and now I'm trying to eat chicken and broccoli every day for, right. you know, which just... I don't want to eat chicken and broccoli every day. <laughs> that's, not, that's not sustainable in any way, shape, or form. Your, your crew, for the last however many years it's been, did you have a crew that, you know, your, your friends, your lifestyle, those other, all those other external factors, right? Did that crew support, you know, for lack of a better way to say it, a healthy lifestyle, or was the crew relatively inactive, you know, good food, beer, wine, and spirits, who cares, and like, you know, because whatever environment you're in can sometimes lead down one path or a different path. Um, yeah, I feel like for the most part, I do have a pretty um, healthy, active oh, okay, okay. crew in good. my life. I, I have always been, or I, I shouldn't say always, in my more adult years, um, have definitely been kind of the heavy one of the group, which is hard um, at times. Um, but yeah, I think the, the people around me definitely are mm -hmm. pretty active for the most part. I, would Dan, say. I don't know if I ever told you, this is be very awkward. I'll talk to you while looking in the camera and you're standing next to me. Okay. Did, you, did I ever tell you that I was a heavy kid? No, I don't think I Oh yeah. That. Oh, I was a fat kid. Yeah. I don't know if you can say fat kid in 2021, but I had, I had too much adipose tissue. How, do, how was, how does that, does that sound? <laughs> very you know? formal. Yes. Thank you. Um, I was glucose intolerant. Um. <laughs> And yes, yeah, so I was heavy all through school, um, and it was not fun times because kids are not kind to other kids, you know, and so yeah, that's a, and you know, my name's Pat, so what do you think that rhymes with? Uh, not a good thing to be. Yes. Not a good thing to be. I'm coming for you, all you little kids. Yeah. <laughs> Let's dive into some of the questions, okay? So... There's a lot of good questions, and I'm gonna, we're going to cover probably the most upvoted ones, and I'm going to rearrange the order a little bit so it kind of uh, makes a little bit more chronological sense. So the first most upvoted question from Michelle M., and let me scroll, Michelle, so I get exactly the question that you asked. Okay. It says, Abby, was there a lightning bolt moment that caused you to decide to make a change? And so, yeah, what... what Sounds like you went up and down so many times. What in the heck? Did you say 16 months? How long ago did you say? Uh, yeah, about a year and a half. Yeah, year and a half? 16 months, yeah. So what the heck was, was there a different lightning bolt 16, 18 months ago that got us to, now we're doing this interview? I don't know that the lightning bolt was any different. I um, was in a lot of pain to the point that like, some days taking a shower felt like a, a marathon because my joints were aching so bad. And it's kind of interesting through having rheumatoid arthritis through all the years. No one ever has said to me <clears throat> at a new diagnosis and, and along the way as it's kind of flared up at times and then been okay at times, um, you know, you need to, what are you eating? Um, Isn't that crazy? You get your weight under control. No, no one ever has addressed that, which I do think is crazy. Um, but <clears throat> that has resulted in just a lot of pain and inflammation. Um, and so I just finally was like, I'm tired of feeling like crap all the time. I think um, the, the difference came around the consistency and sticking with it and not doing the, okay, on Monday I'm going to, you know, make this extreme thing. It, it didn't right. start out that way. I just tried to go for walks every day in the beginning um, and just do some sort of activity a few days a week. Um, and eat less sugar. That's really where everything like kind of started. You know, what's interesting is what you just said right there, I actually had no idea. I mean, you've been over our house how many times we've been over your house. And, you know, obviously all of you don't know Abby, but she's the overwhelming majority of the time I would describe as positive, smiling, happy, laughing, you know, like fun to be around. So it's, it's interesting that what you just described of like living in this pain behind the scenes and even hurting taking a shower, if you, this is the first time I'm hearing this, if you hadn't said that right now, I would have had absolutely zero idea that heavy or not, that your life wasn't just sunshine, rainbows, zero, I mean, because you hit it, quite frankly, you know, whether it was intentionally or just that's your personality and you don't complain, I don't know, but there was no... Um, crack in the armor 
to show that to the outside world. Was that intentional or not intentional? Um, I mean, I think my personality, it just kind of is, is what it is regardless. And I mean, I, I try not to sit around and be the one that's like, oh, my body hurts. No one, no one cares and wants to hear about that um, all the time. So I don't know. I just, yeah. Isn't it crazy though? Like you said, however many times you've gone to the doctor or whatever sort of diagnosis that the issue of weight wasn't addressed. And I don't know why in the world that is. I know that a lot of physicians are trained to, you know, if my arm is broken, fix my arm. If I have these symptoms, it's, it's most of the time treated with a trip to the pharmacy, mm -hmm. not necessarily how to reorganize your entire lifestyle and what you eat and how you cook and how you move your body. I understand it's out of the scope of practice for most physicians. But even with that being said, from an understanding of the human body and, you know, the body is a, a machine to some degree, the system is being incredibly overtaxed, overstressed metabolically, your organs, your joints, like the whole nine yards, the amount of oxygen that you need just to do life's daily tasks, the amount of inflammation that most likely is occurring in the body, that it's so unusual to hear that that was never addressed on top of everything else. So it, it won't be news to our community, but it's just, it kind of catches my attention as to how crazy that is. Yeah, you would think between like a PCP and an actual rheumatologist, you know, along the way that somebody would have said that even at a new diagnosis, like, hey, because I do drastically feel different based on what I'm putting into my body, I can 100% feel sure um, a, and see a, a difference at times if I like eat something that inflames at my left ankle, like doubles in size it's very bizarre oh wow um but yeah it is interesting that nobody ever gives you that information along the way but I was offered lots of medication steroids etc cetera, etc cetera, and really wanted to stay off of um any of kind of the classic RA medications um so that was kind of also just something always in the back of my mind as I get older you know I was like I, I don't want to go down that road so do you think do you think this in, in today's day and age where you're not allowed, the truth can sometimes be hurtful if it's an unpopular or uncomfortable thing and sometimes that prevents people from saying it, that it's almost like weight or being overweight is one of those things that you're almost not allowed to mention or say because then somebody might feel like they're being judged or whatnot, which is an interesting thing from a medical perspective when... I would think some of those things, if they, if somebody did have an idea that that was part of the problem, I would hope, so I'm not saying that anyone did or didn't do this, but I would hope that whatever other concerns are thrown out the window because as a, as a physician or whatever, your primary care should be the health and well-being of this individual standing in front of me. And so we're going to address anything that needs to be addressed. So hopefully, hopefully that, um, that was just, I guess, missed out of I, I don't even know why it was missed. I'm trying to be kind as to why it could be missed. I have no clue. It shouldn't have been missed. Let's go down to the next question to Lisa. Lisa C., next most upvoted question. Okay, we're going to break this into two parts because one's kind of at the beginning and one's uh, where you are now. When, when you did get back on this journey 18 months ago, did you have particular goals? Um, could have been things you did aren't going to cause pain or a particular number on the scale, but did you have goals and what were they? Yes. I mean, I think when I very first started, the goal was around weight and I really didn't have anything outside of that. It was just, you know, I, I wanted to get the number on the scale down and that was my primary Did goal. you care how much it got down? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I had set out smaller chunks. I think when you're losing and trying to lose a lot of weight and I'm still very much kind of in, in the middle of this journey, um, you know, I, I would kind of lay things out that I thought was realistic um, without doing, you know, kind of the extremes that I didn't feel were uh, things that I could sustain. Um, and I, I definitely, I know that I missed one of those uh, for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I just kind of laid things, laid things out that way. I think good on you for, for doing that. You know, I have never been that heavy, so I'm just kind of guessing, you know, and, and I could be totally wrong. But I could see things going one of two ways, right? Like a, a person gets to a certain weight, size, whatever, it's causing pain in their life, and that sparks the 
this has got to change, this is unacceptable. Or it gets to a certain point and a certain size that they're like, what's the point? Yeah. Why should I even try? I mean, trying to lose 100 pounds seems insurmountable. I mean, so screw it. This is just who I am, and I'm going to continue living the life that I, that I have. Did you oscillate back and forth between the, those two, or did you never go down that dark path of screw it? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew that something needed to change. I think the hard part is sometimes I would reach a goal and then almost be like, okay, well, now I can take a deep breath. But what, it, what, is that, what does that mean, really? Because na- now, this far in, you know, things have just kind of become part of my normal life. You know, getting routine exercise, um, you know, is part of my normal life. So that, that isn't going to end now. But th- there was times at the beginning that was like, okay, I, I hit 20 pounds you know, now what in that whole reward system, I had to kind of rewire my ah, brain of like, I deserve you know, a treat. Don't, yes, exactly. <laughs> you don't get to order pizza tonight because yeah. you lost 20 pounds. You know, <laughs> so that was also different, I think, than I had done before, because I would do that before um, and be like, okay, I hit X goal. And now I'm gonna, you know, eat whatever for the next five days. And things turn around really quickly, you gain that weight back oh. really quickly when you do that. Um, I so I did not do that this time. Either. You know, you you mentioned some lifestyle, some stress and stuff like that. Maybe it's tough to kind of, um, you know, shoehorn you into one category. But, you know, would you say that, were you a, you know, a, a stress eater or was it the, the taste of food or whatever it happens? Because I can tell you myself, from being a former heavy kid, that heavy kid still lives inside of me <laughs> every single day, wants to come out. And I'm not a stress eater. I just love food. I love it. If if I could, if I had, maybe it's a blessing that I don't have amazing genetics to just like naturally be lean and everything. Because if I did, if I was one of those lucky people, I would have a Dairy Queen blizzard for breakfast. I would have pizza for lunch and I would have something else because I wouldn't see what it was doing to my body. Like I just, I love it. Do you have any sense as to what was your attraction to food? It wasn't so much that I'm not really, I would say, a, a stress eater either. I think the difference is, as Pat alluded to, my job is stressful and I'm in a leadership role there. Um, and so as, you know, we were opening new units, etc. at the hospital, and I just didn't make myself a priority really. So it wasn't really mm. that I was eating out of the stress. It was that You know, I was at work for 12, 13, 14 hours a day. There was lots of days I was coming home at 11 o'clock at night. So then what would I do? Have to eat at, you know, 11 o'clock at night. And it was never something that was a solid choice. I was getting zero movement in. Um, So I just, it's that I tend to put myself at the bottom of the priority list um, when, when life and everything else is going on. And I've really had to work hard at saying, nope, this is going to be, you know, I need to restructure my day or this, I'm just building this into my, I'm just going to build this into my day now, plan food wise. Um, yeah, I, I prep and plan a lot more. I've got a question that's off, okay. going off chart here. It's one I have just from observing you for the last however many years it's been is, is in, and I don't know the answer to this question. It fascinates me, but you might see somebody that's very heavy and you might, somebody might think to themselves to be that size, somebody must have to be eating a tremendous amount of food. Um, Any time that I was around you, family dinners, meals or whatnot, that was never my observation. That that I was like, well, Abby's not getting four times the plate of food that everybody (laughs) else is. So when you look back now, was your quantity of food way out of control? Or was it was the quantity not really outrageous, but the quality was terrible, the timing was terrible? Like, what What was it? Yeah, I think the quality was terrible. I, I do agree. Quantity, maybe frequency more than okay. quantity at a time. Um, because, yeah, I never, <clears throat> I never have been the, like, I'm going to go up for thirds right. person. Um, <clears throat> but I think, sorry, <coughs> frog. All good, um, all good. I think the quality... Uh, obviously, if you're, you know, swinging by McDonald's, which I, I will say I didn't do that a ton. Like fast food really wasn't the issue. I would order food, restaurant food, right. but not really fast food, gotcha. um, but probably eating more frequently than I should have been. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next, next question. Let's see. Uh, the next question, I kind of combined some, uh, a couple questions from some various people. So, all right. So now how did you... 
let's just actually kind of walk down the journey. You know, you set your goals, you know, you were in the pain, that's what you, know, you got to start, got to make it happen now. In the past, it was all or nothing, that was unsustainable. So now, how did you actually start from a changing of the diet and a changing of the, you know, moving your body kind of standpoint? Yeah, initially, it really was just, I would try to go for a walk um, a few times a week. Uh, and that was really how I very first started. I did um, join. I think, a- I think Emily and I went on a walk or one of those walks that she was on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you on a scary path that I would not walk down by myself. <laughs> There's a trail behind my house. They did not like it. <laughs> um, then I did join a CrossFit affiliate uh, in February of 2020. And then as we all remember what happened in March, COVID happened. So that kind of threw a wrench in that. Um, but I was able to kind of keep the motivation of like, okay, I'm going to figure this out at home. That's when I, you know, kind of more frequently started, um, following linchpin. I have this great resource that's in my family. (laughs) (laughs) So if I also didn't know how to do something or needed a scaled option, their text message away, (laughs) added benefit. Um, so yeah, did, I did that in terms of movement. And you did that with very, I mean, in all honesty, minimal equipment. I think you grabbed a pair of dumbbells and a kettlebell out of mm-hmm. our garage, and that was it. You didn't have rings, didn't have a pull-up bar, didn't have a box, didn't have... Uh, I had a jump rope, too. You had a jump favorite. rope, yeah. but you didn't have a bike or a rower, did you? I did not. So just a pair of dumbbells and a kettlebell, yeah. and then starting to slowly change the diet. Yes. Yeah, the diet thing, I really just started with trying to not eat as much sugar. And and again, was this on you or did you bring in some professional help? Um, About, I don't know, a month or two in, I did work with a nutritionist for eight weeks. Okay. Um, So she really helped. I kind of get overwhelmed by like the tracking and the macros and all of that sort of stuff. Um, So she did all of that, which was really helpful. And then she actually did all of the meal planning with the grocery list. And my job was to just follow what she gave me. Um, So a couple months in, I thought, you know, it might be nice to better know like where I should be at um, just in terms of like protein intake, et cetera. So she definitely helped with, with that part. Um, So I did that for eight weeks. Were things, so you brought her in about two months into it. Yeah. Uh, Did you bring her in solely, did you bring her in, I guess, because you identified a problem or you making decent progress, but you just wanted to make sure you were on the right track? Yes. And I think I was starting to slip a little bit into, um, almost restricting my diet, like not having enough caloric intake. Uh, And then the mind, so then as I was trying to figure that out and, and then I was playing mental games with myself and being like, well, I don't want to go, you know, I don't want to eat too much, but I also know what I'm doing right now is probably not enough. So I was trying to find where I should be, and against that sustainability piece. Isn't it crazy how tough it is? I mean, eating is, we do it every day. It's like breathing, drinking water. Like, there are just some things that are unavoidable in life, and sometimes how to do these basic life-sustaining functions, it's challenging, it's confusing, confusing, and then a lot of the information you find on the internet or in a local magazine is just garbage or confusing or not sustainable or you're going to do some sort of 21 day challenge that again it's not sustainable so what happens on day 22 and so yeah I, I can see why you made some good changes and it's nice to bring in somebody this person that you brought in mm-hmm. hindsight now looking back at it did she offer you advice that worked in the moment or did she have the kind of the mindset that you're talking about that was nice baby steps that you can actually do for the rest of your life. Yeah, definitely baby steps. She works uh, primarily, I think she works only with women, kind of geared towards like just people that are busy and don't have a lot of time to spend doing that. That She, she kind of takes that off of your plate, but you know, whole real foods, but also not overwhelming recipes that are going to take you forever to make. And now you're spent an hour and a half in the kitchen with all these weird ingredients. It was right. none of that. It was very easy um and very straightforward and yeah she it was no um extremes and even we did a lot of work on planning so I would say you I met with her every week and would say okay I have x social event going on on Saturday and we would work that into the plan and so she would ask like more questions about that um if I knew at all like if if it was at a restaurant 
you know, you could look at the menu in advance. She would offer meal suggestion options, even like, are you going to have a drink? Uh, what's your plan there? So it was a lot more focused on planning and working that in. Like, okay, let's make sure that you get a solid breakfast. Let's make sure you get a good workout in and kind of just more of that planning and preparation. She was very helpful. Now, the information that she gave you, was it, was it, because sometimes what you need to do, we all know that we need to do it. You just need somebody else to say, yeah. this is what you should be doing, you know, or it's, it's really, rarely that a professional comes in and goes, you shouldn't drink four Mountain Dews a day. And you go, oh, really? I, I, <laughs> I had no, no clue. <laughs> so I guess when you were going over your meals with her, or maybe you'd walk through that menu of the restaurant and she would help you make some selections were you like, ah, yeah, that's the meal I probably knew I should have, but it's not as tasty as the other meal, so I wouldn't get it? Or were you like, huh, I would never have even thought that that was something which would fit in a healthy lifestyle? No, I would say most of the time, you know, you you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, I mean, I accountability piece meeting with her every week, and she would always ask, how was your event on Saturday? So I knew, okay, check in. yeah, she's going to check in with me. She's going to ask about it. I'm going to have to answer to this, and I'm not a very good liar. So <laughs> right. that is, um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, be able to tell her honestly whatever it was. I ate. Maybe the, like, trying to fit in having a drink and knowing that that's okay, but mm -hmm. what, you know, drink choices, et cetera, that was probably helpful. But in terms of the food portion, um, you know, I, I typically knew, but it was still nice to have somebody else alongside me. And was the food portion information she gave, was it ballpark, like um, the palm of your fist for meat, or were you going around places with the scale, breaking out your phone and logging mac macros? <laughs> no, I didn't know the formal tracking at all, and it was very much ballpark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And the, um, did I cut you off? Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I can't picture myself with like a food scale that I'm going to plop out at restaurants. I know people, some people do I've that. I've seen people do that. More power to them. It's not my, not my Right. <laughs> it's socially interesting. Uh, you the, the check-in thing is a big deal too, because, and we experience this all the time at, at Lynchpin, which is, you know, uh, I've been very vocal about this. You got to have yourself a community, whether that's a, a coach that you're checking in with, a buddy that you text or post in the Facebook group. But if, that accountability and that, you know, you know that somebody else is going to ask, hey, how'd the workout go? And you have to go like, ah, yeah, I blew it off the last three days in a row. You don't want to say that. So, they, you know, sometimes social pressure or peer pressure can be a good thing if it leads to helping create these positive changes that eventually become routine that eventually, you know, you would have worked out whether somebody checked in with you or not. You would have made the good decision with the refrigerator whether somebody checked in or not. That's a great place to be. But some people need that helping hand for a month. Some people need it for three years. doesn't matter what it is. But just make sure you're setting yourself up for success because, as we've said before, life's a team sport. It's not a, it's not a solo sport. Okay, so the next one, let's see. Um, you know, well, I could go somewhere else for a second here. When you started making these changes, was it obvious to those around you? So, for example, you went to that social function. Mm -hmm. You went to that whatever... You went to the restaurant that chances are maybe you've gone to with your friends regularly. Everyone knows what most people get all the time. And and was it obvious to your friends that you were making different selections? And was that supported? Was it received? How did that go? Yeah, I mean, I kind of, when you asked kind of about my, my crew, if you will, um, most of them, like I said, I kind of have always been the, like, heavier one of the groups. Mm -hmm. So... I don't, I mean, most of them were already making those choices. So then I was just typically one of them and no, so no, there wasn't a lot of like, Oh, Abby, that's what you're ordering. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I didn't, I guess I didn't have a lot of that. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. You got a good crew. Yeah. Joseph G. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Just wants to know when you first started out and maybe this is just, you know, up to and including now biggest challenges regarding consistency. Maybe making it now a new lifestyle. Yeah, I think initially when you first started, I was in that kind of brain fog and being so tired all the time um, and in that much pain that the consistency was just pushing through that stuff and knowing like, okay, you are you have to do this today. Um, and now it's more just fitting it in amongst the busyness of kind of 
life, but mm-hmm. I don't taking out that portion now that I'm not so foggy and I'm not so tired all the time. The consistency I think has gotten easier because I'm not up against that. And I never understood people who were like, I crave the exercise and the feeling afterwards. I always was like, that is garbage. I never understand it. Um, But now I will say I do get, I feel so much better afterwards. I still pretty much hate the actual The activity during it. Yeah. So I went for a run last night and I was like, I hate every second of all of this. Um, But afterwards. But it's worth it. Yes. It ends up being, it ends up being worth it. And so now that consistency has become easier because I kind of, I am kind of craving that. Okay. Yeah. It's sometimes, sometimes if you're in a negative, negative decisions can lead to more negative decisions and positive ones can lead to more positive ones. You start to get into a different cycle and hopefully that starts to compound and, and go round and round. You mentioned your goals when you first started, mm-hmm. you know, a particular weight on the scale, whatever it happened to be. Now, 18 months down the road, mm-hmm. Same goals or new goals? Um, I mean, there's still definitely like a weight size component there, but I would say I'm not so hyper focused on that. It's been cool to have goals around um, activities and like what that my body can now do things I couldn't do before. So um, I like to be outside as much as I can. Uh, I like to hike a lot. So this summer, for the first time, I did some trails that were rated as difficult on the app, and I could not. There's no way rewind a year ago that I would have been able to do that if you're local to Washington like Mount Sai for example was one that I had really wanted to do um and didn't know you know a, a year prior I probably couldn't have done that so I was able to do that this summer um running his I'm I have never been a runner and I do have to be a little bit cautious because of just prior injury type mm-hmm. stuff um but I also was like I can go out and run a mile and a half now I that is like almost unfathomable because I, there's no way a year ago that I would have been it. So those goals have kind of shifted around, um, like pushing my body to do new things and not being like hyper focused on the scale. I'll usually only weigh myself like every couple of weeks. Okay. Does the, is it, does the weight come off easier initially and now the last, like the stretch to the finish line is, is tougher than, than getting to where you are now? Are you experiencing yes. that? Yes. And I think that has actually been harder over the last couple of months that kind of than I anticipated. I mm. thought, well, it'll, it's just going to keep rolling. I knew it would slow down. Um, I think when you have that much weight to lose, yeah, that initial weight loss was really pretty quick. Um, now it definitely is harder, but I also think the consistency and activity, my body composition is changing and I can tell that um, and people around me can tell that. So <clears throat> I try not to get, again, ho- hyper-focused on the scale portion of it while those goals still exist, I can definitely tell by the way my clothes fit, um, for example, that, you know, my body is still changing. You you said you lost about, what, 90 pounds right now? Yeah. I can't imagine going out into the garage, taking two 45-pound plates, and I know this probably isn't an exact, you know, analogy of how it feels, but putting them in a weight vest or a backpack or strapping them to my body and just, like, having, walking around and living my life for a week like that, I would be exhausted like exhausted and and i'm reminded now what 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 was it two years ago three years ago something like that we all went down to disney in in california (laughs) and your crazy sister laid out the world's most rigorous day one at disneyland ever i think we um this is not an exaggeration somebody had like a little you know watch on or something we walked walked over 18 miles that day and so you did that did at whatever weight that you were at i was exhausted (laughs) at the end of that day you never let out a peep of complaining (laughs) did you go back to the hotel room and just die in your bed (laughs) yes that's exactly what happened yes yeah i try to like fight through in the moment and just you know go to a different place in my head and keep trying especially you're in disneyland happiest place on earth it was fun oh but but now i mean do you look back at that and i, I would assume how your knees felt or your back yeah. felt or whatnot and just be like what was i doing to myself or yes. you know how different would that experience feel today yeah i mean things get exponentially easier even with like running and even the linchpin workouts in the garage i was doing burpees the other day and i thought 
I, re I very clearly remember when I first started, I think I did 10 burpees, had a pounding headache and could bear, I mean, I could literally barely do it. Um, and now, I mean, there's been some workouts recently with upwards of 90 and I've been able to get through those. That's Not huge. pretty, not right. pretty, but uh, yeah. It, That's enormous. I mean, yeah. that is, that can't be uh, celebrated enough. That's a huge accomplishment. And, and I think the other tough part if I could, you know, get on my soapbox for a second, is uh, all of these, and I'm not saying you fall into this camp, but you're not going to get to where you are or maybe where some people want to be without some suffering. Hard work, you have to make changes in your life. It's not going to be pleasant because it's it's much more comfortable and fun and easy to sit on the couch and watch Netflix than to go do bur burpees and give yourself a pounding headache. That is not fun. It's it's a lot easier to eat something quick, fast, simple, and so delicious that elicits every hormone that the manufacturers have perfectly chemically you know, made it do than to have the, the chicken breast with the something else that takes longer to prepare, and this is a pain in the butt, like, but you're not going to get where you, no one's gonna hand it to you, maybe that's a great way to say it, like you've got to actually get off your butt and go do it, and like you said, having a crew or a community or somebody that you're checking in with, it's hard to do that stuff. It's 100% possible, but it's really, really hard. It's that whole simple, not easy. It's relatively simple. You know, you've got to make better nutritional choices. You've got to move your body. Now, of course, we can nuke that, but it's relatively simple. But that in no way, shape, or form means that it's easy. It's actually simple and really, really difficult to do. Good. One more, uh, two more questions. Next one's from uh, Kyle L, and basically wants to say, okay, let's let's have some real talk here. Can you talk about failures you have had on this journey, and how did you rebound from them? And I think that's a great one because most people just don't cruise effortlessly to the finish line, you know, getting no, yes. getting not, you know, scuffed up. So what what's happened yes. along the way? Um, first of all, I try to reframe that a little bit into opportunities to do things differently like that <laughs> yeah <clears throat> instead of you know always looking at things like I fail and I think part of that is that mental game of I ate a donut today well now the whole day is shot and I'm going to continue to make really mm -hmm. poor choices and then that cycle just continues and days of wash screw yes. it yes and then forget it. I already ate like crap so I'm actually not going to work out today and and so that doesn't happen anymore um if I eat something you know maybe off off plan every single time you eat is an opportunity to make a different decision mm -hmm. um, instead of looking at it you know that other way of well I ate that and now we're just gonna throw the whole day out right. the window um, so that's sorry I took a couple notes on questions no, so right ahead. yeah you're good um, yeah so I would just kind of look at like how can I do better tomorrow and setting small goals along the way I think to help and I definitely I said this earlier, I definitely have missed one of those. So again, just saying, okay, well, that I didn't, I'm not where I thought that I would be or what I, where I was hoping I would be um, by X date, but also looking back and saying, okay, well, I've made all this progress mm -hmm. and I have finally learned like the consistency really does pay off and your body does, or at least mine. Um, I mean, I do, I will plateau for a while. I, and then all of a sudden I will drop again or something will change, um, on my body. I'm like, Oh, okay. There it is. There's all that hard work that I've been mm -hmm. putting in. So there has been those hiccups and I think just continuing to like press forward and stay consistent, um, and looking at those of, you know, what needs to be changed up and just opportunities to do things differently. It's got to be tough when you plateau to fight through that plateau and not yes. be like, screw it, this is just where I'm going to be. in the middle of that right now. <laughs> oh, are you really? Yes. And so what, it I mean, what hard. are the mental games you, you play to, to stay on course? Or is it just, you're there and you don't, it's, is it now easy for you to stay on course or is it still a, a daily discipline challenge thing? Um, I mean, it's definitely still a little bit of a challenge, but I know that it will... It will come, and I can also tell. Okay, maybe the scale isn't moving, but again, I'm like I'm stronger than I was when I right. very, my first go. set of dumbbells were. I couldn't do any workout with more than a twenty, the twenties, and now I can do most everything with the thirties. So nice. I mean things like that. So yes, the scale might not be moving quickly anymore. Um, and again, that that craving, the um, kind of feeling after the the workouts, mm -hmm. nutrition is always 
because again, we do it every day, right? You're eating multiple times a day. Um, so that always is kind of a continued challenge, but planning is also huge. I try to think about on Sundays, you know, what I'm going to have for the week ahead, um, and just make sure that I'm more prepared. I guess. You know, the dumbbell thing is actually huge. It's, it's, is, I don't want to say insignificant, as, as simple or as quick as it might be to gloss over. They're like, oh, I went from the 20s to the 30s. If we do some simple arithmetic, you've that's a 50% increase in loading. If if you're suddenly working out with 50% more on the barbell or 50% more than whatever it is, that's a huge improvement in your athletic ability and capacity. So I think, that's, I think that should be... Um, given the respect that it deserves. And the other part, which you said, which I think is huge, we touch on all the time, is consistency is key. Consistency is such a big deal because, like we've said before, a lot of your fitness and your eating, I think it's like the stock market, right? Where it just there's peaks and valleys where if you look at if you look at one year, you would like to see a nice, smooth increase. Now, if you zoom in, you'd still like to see an increase in the month. But then if you look at a week, you'll see this, this down and up and even in a day. So... You had a down meal, whoop de doo It doesn't yeah. mean that the whole curve is now going down, not up. Mm -hmm. You missed a workout or you didn't quite hit it as hard as you wanted to, whoop de doo You know, you're always one meal or one workout away from getting right back on track. Mm -hmm. And so, because I used to have that same mindset as well, uh, which was one bad meal, screw the day. Might as well just burn it down and just see what we can get accomplished. <laughs> and, that's, and, and that'll put you put you in a hole that will take more than one day to climb out of. That's the whole, like one meal, you might be back on track by the evening. Mm -hmm. But if you have a bad day that leads to a second bad day, you might mess up a week from that. And so it's a, that's a really, the consistency is huge. Yeah. People also start to notice when the changes are that significant. So that also is helpful to stay on track because now I kind of feel like there's a lot of eyes that have been watching people at work that I, this woman stopped me actually the other day and I have not seen her in a while. Um, and she was said, you've lost weight, like a lot of weight. And I started laughing and then she was telling me about this, you know, journey that she is on. And, uh, so that, that also kind of helps because I feel like there's, there's people that are paying attention. That's cool. Yeah. But again, the positive peer pressure, yeah. social pressure. <laughs> All right. Final question is from Bridget. Let's see here. Give me a second to scroll. I want to make sure I ask it properly. How am I missing it? Bridget, hold on one second here. I've got it roughly worded, but I want to make Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. It says, hi, Abby. Thanks for joining us and sharing your story. Something I've noticed when people make big changes in their life from diet and exercise to career changes or marriage slash divorce is that those around them who are accustomed to seeing them in a certain way can be confused or maybe even feel threatened by the changes in that person. Did you experience this? And if so, how did you deal with it? So I thankfully have not experienced um, that really at all. Like we've talked about my kind of crew and support system around me have been kind of very celebratory right along with me. Um, my, my two cents on that is maybe that means you should check the people that you're surrounding yourself with, um, because if people really care about you and love you, then they should be supportive of what you're doing and not, um, not threatened by that, mm -hmm. I guess. So I don't know if that's my, no, two cents. I think I that's, didn't have a lot of that. I think that's totally fair. And, you know, we were chatting about this question a little bit before we clicked on, we even, you know, you got Emily's two cents on it as well. And maybe the only other caveat to that might be, because Abby's personality, like I said, hasn't changed. She's the same person now as she was when I first met her years ago. Potentially, and she's got a good crew, so that's great. Potentially, maybe, you know, there's like that butterfly effect of somebody coming out of the cocoon and being a different person, right? So maybe if some person changes a whole bunch of things in their life, totally transforms their body... Maybe they were shy and timid and didn't have courage before, and now they find a voice for themselves. They carry themselves differently. They're a bit more outspoken, and maybe they start to look around of who they've been with and realize that, well, these were negative people to, to begin with, and now we don't share these similar goals. That could lead, you know, so maybe that person actually was the catalyst and the change and takes a look around, and now there's some, not conflict, but there's some tension because... People's goals have changed. How they conduct themselves has changed. The lifestyle they want to leave uh, lead changes. You know how they 
they walk tall now, they, they speak their mind now, you know, all these things that working out can give you not just increased physical capacity, but there's all those other things such as confidence that it's tough to measure, but as we've all seen, anybody who starts to build up their body, they do, most people do carry themselves a little bit differently, and so depending upon your crew, that could lead uh, somewhere positive or somewhere negative. So luckily, Abby's had a good crew start to finish, and so they'll they'll continue on her journey with her. So that closes it out. Anything, I guess, we should say that we didn't cover that we should or any helpful advice to anybody? Um, I mean, I think just the advice is to keep keep going. That consistency piece is, is huge. I, like I said, very much am in the middle of this and still working on it every day so I get the the challenges and the struggles and yeah just keep at it do you find it annoying that your sister is such a good athlete <laughs> that that was frustra- gonna be, I, I frequently frustrates say me. I'm married to the woman <laughs> frustrates me I'll tell you a story so we did the workout yesterday's workout for cross the linchpin was a classic classic cross workout named nasty girls classic and Emily went out in the garage of course she's like you know 14 weeks postpartum you think I'd have a chance of beating her she does a workout in like the high eights. It was like 8.50 something or whatnot. So she can, comes in, tells me that time. I don't know if she's dropping that time as like a, let's see what you got or, you know, whatever. So she tells me the time. And then she also chimes in with, the muscle-ups went really well, which I was happy about. And it's like, interesting. Okay, fine. So I go out in the garage later on that day and I know... Sub nine, I got to beat her today. Sub nine. And, and, and she said that thing about the muscle-ups. So... I tried to kill myself and give myself rhabdo to, to beat her yesterday. Two rounds down, I was right at six minutes. There's one round left. So I knew I had to hold that exact pace for one more round to beat her. And I knew in that second, I could not do that. And I tried and tried and I just, I came in like nine fourteen or something. Great workout for me, but I didn't beat her. So I come in, God bless her. I come in just out of breath and I'm like 914 I almost gotcha and again I thought she'd crush the muscle ups because she said they went so well and it's, you know it's three rounds there's seven muscle ups per round and I go I'd like my best day ever in muscle ups I did the first two rounds unbroken in the second round I got five and two and she's like you're kidding me and I was like well yeah you said the muscle ups went great didn't you do them all unbroken she's like I didn't do any of them unbroken I, I broke up every single round and I was like what and then God bless my wife. I could see her mind working. She was like, so I broke up all the muscle-ups and beat him. He did them unbroken, slower than me. And I could see her trying to phrase it because she was genuinely curious as to how that happened. But she wanted to phrase it in a way that wasn't hurtful. So I saw her mind working. She goes, you did them, you did that good on the rings? I was like, yeah. She goes, well, what took, um, what, um, I was like, just ask. Go ahead, just ask. What happened, right? How was I still slower than you? <laughs> and I was like, I'm sure that my, to get those seven muscle-ups unbroken after I finished my 50 air squats, I stood there hyperventilating with my hands on my hips for 30 seconds. Then I started the rings, whereas you probably just finished your air squats and it started going, so. <sighs> I always say we come from the same genes. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. My, She's definitely my <laughs> goodness. crazy. Every day. She gets me every single day. I so. just try to come within like 10 minutes of her. <laughs> I think that's fair. I think that's fair. So I, oh, it was so close yesterday. And even like a lifetime PR. She's like, mm, no, I broke everything. I'm still beat you. So, all right. Well, thank you very much for making a time out of your day. You probably got to get off to work. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Of course. And uh, well, maybe we can check back in, you know, yeah. sometime later, see how it's going. Perfect. So thanks everybody out there in Lynchman for the questions. Enjoy your rest day. I certainly will be enjoying mine and we will talk later.